Thank you very much indeed. Mona El Tahawi, um, I want to first uh, start by talking about the resignation of the newly appointed culture minister. He's a writer, Gabaras Four, who um, was the only new face in the so called new cabinet appointed by President Mubarak. Uh, were you one of those criticizing his taking up the post? I was quite surprised that he did take up the post, actually, because, you know, as a, a, a writer, a well-known writer in Egypt, um, I would have expected him to not want to be tainted with anything to do with the Mubarak regime. And his predecessor, Farouk Hosni, was in his post for 22 years. So the culture ministry comes with a lot of baggage. So, I mean, I mean for whatever reason, we heard it was for health reasons, but mm. for whatever reason that Gabar Asfour resigned, I'm glad he did. Um I understand that Egypt's main daily newspaper, which has been a mouthpiece as well for Egyptian governments in the past, has taken a stand uh, supporting protests. It seems that the cultural world, the world of media and communications, is now splitting from former loyalties. I think what's happening in Egypt generally is that the state propaganda machine realized that it could not keep a lid on things because for a very long time, for, for most of the uprising actually, we heard of these absurd kind of episodes of people being brought on uh, live on air saying that they, they were paid agents of the United States and Israel and all kinds of absurdities basically to, to um, make the, the pro-democracy demonstrators look bad. And, um, and for the longest time, they also denied that anything was happening right there in the middle of downtown Cairo, let alone the rest of the country. So once you began to hear of, of defections, we heard of Shahira Amin, uh, Amin a famous uh, Nile TV uh, anchor woman, veteran anchor woman there. Once she, she left and people began to realize that you could not keep this door closed, mm -hmm. I think some people must have realized that, you know, we've better start reporting some of the truth that's happening there because people just simply don't believe it anymore. I don't know how much of it is pushed by the state itself because it realizes that it looks completely crazy to pretend that nothing is happening and how much is individual initiative by people there. And I wonder what the impact of uh, this kind of development has been in America on policy makers. As an Egyptian living in America, what's it like for you seeing the uh, Obama administration, at least um, in terms of rhetoric, it seems uh, increasing the pressure on the Mubarak government? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I don't really know where the Obama administration stands. I mean, they, they've been acting like a yo-yo. They started off, you know, quite trying to be neutral in a situation that deserved anything but neutrality. And then they seem to be moving further and further towards the pro-democracy demonstrators and saying things like, we want a, a, a smooth transition of power now. But then over the weekend, we heard Secretary Clinton talk about stable transition. She was beginning to use the language of the Mubarak regime again, especially the vice president appointed by Mubarak. Like almost any man who now is using this very kind of threatening language about what could happen because the armed forces could intervene, you know, kind of conveniently neglecting the fact that he is armed forces, Mubarak is armed forces, the prime minister is armed forces. So it, it's, it's a farce. It's bizarre. And the U.S. administration, as long as it does not continue this consistent line, then the Mubarak regime is going to know that you know, it, it basically can do anything. I'm, I'm not demanding that the U.S. administration go in and rescue revolutionaries in Egypt. They're doing a great job. But I am demanding that the, the Obama administration take a moral stand and make it very clear to its best friend in the Middle East, basically, or in the Arab world. Uh, it must make clear to Egypt that you cannot... Uh, disappear people. We've been hearing of more and more people being disappeared. You cannot unleash your brutal security forces and people and you cannot threaten to use the armed forces that the United States gives $1.3 billion to every year. Thank you very much, Mona Al-Tahawi, live from New York.